Happy Tuesday. I think it's still Tuesday. It feels like there's been a lot packed into this week already with my various bits and pieces uh, going on this week. I don't know about you, but hi, hope you're doing well. It has been a bit of a full on week already and I'm sorry I'm about, what, half an hour late for this um, this live. Um, circumstances beyond my control. I think the weather's had an impact on the drainage around uh, Hemel Hempstead, Hertfordshire, where I live. Um, because it's taken me twice as long to make the journey that would usually take me 10 minutes. So I've been stuck in traffic, but i um, still going to bring you this live tonight around where to really start your career change. So that's what we're going to cover tonight. Where on earth do we start? Now, we will change careers several times in our lives. We may even change our husbands and wives several times in our lives. Who knows? Life is not a straight line anymore, as I very often say. It's a bit of a bowl of spaghetti. It's a little bit maybe more complex, more mobile uh, due to how we work, where we work, the global economy, you name it, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so on average, we change. I think the current average is we change our careers five to seven times during our working lives. Now that's careers. It says careers, not jobs. And there's another stat here, because you know I love a stat. This must be due to my background in pharmaceuticals and substantiating what I say. But anyway, with an ever increasing number of career choices, 30% of the workforce will now change careers or jobs every 12 months. Now I don't know about you, but back in the day, whenever back in the day was, um, the message was very mu much about be secure, stay in a job forever, not forever, but for a long time, you know, wait until you get that gold watch or carriage clock. That's really important to have that continuity of service. And um, with some of my peers and friends that I've grown up with in the contracting world and other worlds that I'm involved in and coaching, um, some of them have found that actually having a very long service in a career is now seen as a weakness. Now, I knew that you know on you know we do tend to change roles what every every three three years or so but it looks like it's gone down to 12 months so it's just showing um that the workplace is much more mobile dynamic even more so than it used to be now in the us there's a stat to say that in the us this is a us stat from the bureau of labor statistics people in in the study um, who were baby boomers, so my parents' generation even, even though the message there was very much about stay in a job, be secure, which trickled over into my generation, I think. Uh, and I'm sure some of you, whatever age you are, maybe still get that message from your parents, you know, not because they're being mean, but they just want to keep you safe and happy. Um, people in that study held 11.7 jobs between the age of 18 and 48. And I don't think that includes a paper round. So that's quite a number of career changes you're talking about there. So if you are talking about changing careers, don't beat yourself up. If you're not sure where to start, don't beat yourself up. If you're halfway in between one career shift and another, don't beat yourself up. You are where you're supposed to be. Um, just make sure that you are your ladder's leaning against the right wall. So you, you are focused towards what you want your overall life to look like maybe in the future, maybe one year's down the road, two years down the road, one year, what, two years, five years, maybe even six months or a month. Set your own time scale, scale but have that um, idea of where you want your career to be. Now, many moons ago, I was passionate about going in and freelancing, doing big, long contracts and um, sort of saving a lot of money. And that was great because I wanted to go off scuba diving and traveling the world. Now, my friends that packed up diving, I thought they had two heads. It was like, are you crazy? Why are you giving up scuba diving? We get to see all these amazing things. Well, I've changed. I've evolved. It's crept up over time. I think sometimes change happens over time until you are ready to kind of embrace the change. It's like a, a rumbling tummy that builds up into hunger pains. So why am I saying this? Because... You know, I've been shifting. I shift what I do. It's like, do you know what? Um, started doing some more one-to-one uh, -one coaching after I qualified. Still doing one-to-one -one coaching. Now looking at, do you know what? Really love doing events, workshops, that kind of thing. Hello, Andrew. You owe me a beer. Thank you. Anyway, so first question. <laughs> I need one, actually. First question really to ask yourself, is it 
um, are you running to something or uh, away from something? Because sometimes we can just have like a bit of a uh, <laughs> thumbs up. I'll take that as a yes. Yes to the beer. Um, take that as a sign that maybe you're just experiencing those lulls in life that we all have. Now, yeah, I'm a coach. Yeah, I'm lucky I've got the tools at my disposal to... Uh, get me out of those lulls but we all have those moments where we're just a bit tired a bit overwhelmed and you know things sometimes just get better better of us it doesn't matter who you are unless you've got wires coming out your backside you're not a robot so basically um you know go easy on yourself and think about do i really want this career shift is this something that has been bubbling away for a long time and i'm now starting to feel that, oh my goodness, I really can't push this down any any longer. And that's certainly the point I got to. I remember being at a photocopier and I just went, I just can't do this anymore. And it wasn't that the people were bad. It wasn't that the role that was bad. A few years before, the role I was in was like the f- fantastic, exactly what I wanted. But I'd shifted. And when I said I went freelancing, that's to enable me to go diving, save up money and diving. And now it's been about, do you know what? That was about exploration. Now I'm exploring things in a different way, like mindset and through the coaching and the training. That's shifting all the time as well. It's just a shifting journey. And that's that's good, actually. It's not always good to be static. Um, so, you know, observe and, and really be honest with yourself about, is this a knee-jerk reaction? Is it just because your boss was a bit hard on you today? Was it that you didn't do your best work today? You weren't your best self? Um, is it that you just need to address something with your boss? Or is it, you know, I'm bored, I just need more stretch in my role? Um, or is it a real sign of asking yourself, do you know what, this fundamentally doesn't feel like what I want to be doing anymore. And if I wake up in a year's time and I'm still doing this, I'm literally going to be really annoyed with myself or even worse, you know, and we don't want that. So just be honest with yourself to have a bit of a regroup. Um, There's some wonderful tools out there that you can use and they don't cost anything to assess your strengths, by the way. So let's do a bit of a reboot. Let's think, okay, let's say that you do want to change your career. Now, you can still use some of these tips if it's changing a job. It might be changing a function, it might be a sideways move. But if this is about changing a career, sometimes we can get really stuck and think, but I don't know what I want to do. It's because we haven't allowed ourselves that, that space and that time and the permission to think about what we really want to do. And I coach a lot of people, male and female, who have grown up with um, conditioning or sets of beliefs. We all have beliefs. We all have beliefs. Every time we make a change, these beliefs and these nagging voices come up. So, you know, everybody in the world has these, even people like Oprah Winfrey, Jim Carrey, all of those famous people, um, they've all got beliefs and doubts. But... um, Really start to look at what your strengths are. Um, and, and again, as I say, you can use these tips if it's, 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 if it's a role shift. But believe you me, I coach so many people who are not giving themselves the permission to explore and to have fun exploring it. I always say to my clients sometimes, but I always say to my clients sometimes, I mean, I say to my clients a lot that this is a really nice problem to have. This is like a voyage of discovery. There, um, there's an online tool called Strengths Finder. I think it's called VIA, V-I-A, Strengths Finder. You can do that online for free. And that gives you your top three strengths. Now, it's really good because it turns out a report of your different strengths, but your top ones. And you can pay more for a more detailed report, but the free report's really, really, really good. And it looks at, these are my top key strengths. And it gives you an analysis about, this is where it... Um, really serves me and this is where perhaps I'm overusing those strengths um, and it's not serving me so for example um, my top strength is zest so that zest enthusiasm and I would say 99-95% of the time I am waking up very buzzy if not more actually Um, it's unusual for me to wake up feeling a bit meh a bit a bit low a bit down but as i say when we're tired we all do have those off days it's fine we're not robots but anyway so zest is a key strength of mine fantastic Mm, not so good when you're so enthusiastic about things you try and do things quickly and all at once so that's something i've learned about myself that my strength is also perhaps a bit of a weakness in places 
Um, I think there's something else around appreciation. That's great. So I love being appreciative, positive, motivating. Um, but sometimes maybe that can mean I'm a little bit over optimistic about things. Other people, perhaps, who knows? But that's just where I've sort of come to with it. But do have a look at Via Strengths. I actually um, specialize in DISC. DISC is a fantastic tool. I've used it so many times when I'm coaching workshops uh, around leadership, when I'm coaching team workshops, where there's all these sort of conflicts and issues going on. There's a lack of communication. We do that and it's done, you know, it's analysed. And you look at it like a lot of these tools are and it, it spits out the statistics and how you've answered things. You get a really, really in-depth report to say, aha, aha, this is how I show up to work. This is the mask I put on. This, and we all do it, it's not a criticism, we all put a, a front on in different circumstances. Um, this is how I act under pressure, and this is the true me. And it gives you a really detailed report about your strengths, your weaknesses, how you like to be communicated with, what environment you like, what kind of jobs you might like. And for me, it's been so valuable with my clients because some of them have been sort of a bit tentative about making a career shift or um, a tweak, a change. And when we look at that, it's like, oh my goodness. So I had a client the other week saying that, do you know what, I feel guilty because I feel like I should be more of a leader in, in my career and my life generally. And I said, well, what does leadership mean to you personally? What does it actually mean to you? And then we did his DISC profile, and this is a very senior guy, and it says, actually, you're a very creative person. You are good at starting things off. You can lead but sometimes that's in association with other people. So he can lead, it's just about the context in which he does lead. So sometimes it's great just have that in front of you and go, right, this is what I'm good at. These are some of the skills I may need to, to look at. I've talked about skills audits before. What skills do you have? What soft skills are you really good at? And what technical skills are you really good at? And where can you use those skills? Where can you use those skills to the best of your ability? What, what roles, what careers might suit you for that? Now, if you've got an idea of the kind of career that you do want, where do those skills fit in? And is there a gap? So maybe list all of those strengths. Think about if you've got a good idea of the career you want, think about and have a look, do some research about the kind of skills you need. Is there a gap? Now, if you don't want to do, for example, say you want to become a journalist or a blogger and you feel you need to qualify in learning how to do creative writing or writing for SEO, you don't have to do a three-year degree course to do it. There's lots of courses on Udemy, other course platforms, things like that, where you can bridge that gap. So think about you know, what you can do to bridge that gap if that's something you need to do. Or can somebody teach you? Have you got a mentor? Or can you just learn, learn on the job, so to speak? Okay. So that's a kind of bit of a reboot scenario about looking at skills, looking at your profile, looking at your strengths. So the next piece is actually uh, pen to paper, get this stuff out of your brain onto paper so you can see it objectively in front of you. It's very therapeutic. It accesses that part of the brain around creativity, motivation, and lots of, uh, lots of other useful things. So make a wish list. Don't censor yourself. If you want to be a trapeze artist, put it down. If you want to be the next top model, put it down. You know, on some level, yes, these things do have to feel like they are realistic to you. But, you know, even if you put down, I want to be the, ne the world's next top model. Now, you might not feel that that's feasible, but what is it about that that attracts you? Is it that you want something where you can have a bit of a profile, a bit of fame? Is it something about being in the fashion industry? What is that little clue telling you? Don't like dismiss things out of hand. These are all clues for you. So write down your wish list, 10 occupations, and then again, have a look at the skills list. Where are the skills that you have, you know, what you need to acquire. Regrouping again, explore, speak to friends, LinkedIn, oh my gosh, LinkedIn is just amazing for finding out kind of different role profiles. Remember that sometimes the recruitment firms will have very sort of specific role profiles. It doesn't mean that's the role that you have to have. You may be able to negotiate and find something that you can create. You know, I've had that before where it's like, look, this is what we need someone to do. And I've worked to negotiate what I want in that role. So look at the job roles. And I would say also listen to your gut. This bit, this bit, and this bit, i.e. tummy, 
is all connected. It's all one system. It's not separate. We know that now. So your gut and your, your head and your body has all these memories and thinking cells in it. Every single bit of your body. So listen to your gut instincts. Um, okay. So what you might want to do now, part of the regrouping, is trim down those list of occupations on what you learn from your research. Say, for example, that you think... Do you know what, I really want to be a marine biologist, which actually I did think I wanted to be for a while. But then when I realised I'd be studying mud for a lot of the time, I thought, do you know what, how motivated am I really to do that? Do I really want to go back and have a degree? And I can tell you now, when I had, I went through a few iterations of things I was doing, when I found out about coaching, um, and then when I've sort of done speaking as well, it's like, oh my goodness, I just love this. And that really helps me get through those really busy times as well. So uh, just think about, you know, listen to your gut, sort of whittle down those different um, career options. And if you're saying, oh, do you know what? I can't be bothered to, which is fair enough. You know, we don't all want to go back to university. Um, but, you know, sort of listen to what your instincts are telling you about those career choices. So by this stage, you might just have a few options on the list. Um, so the next thing to do is maybe do some informational type interviews with people that you know in your network or you can find in your network or perhaps you can find videos of them on YouTube to really do some research. Can you do some informational interviews with people? Say you want to be a school teacher and or you want to, you know, and you're doing something, you've been a teaching assistant abroad and you want to go really into teaching, speak to people, get the real picture because every job, believe you me, has an upside and a downside. There's always things in our jobs, whatever we're doing, that's like, mm, don't really fancy doing that. But um, if we can really enjoy what we're doing, those things tend to lessen. But th there are always going to be things that maybe aren't your favourite task in a role. So, okay, if you don't know anyone personally, as I've mentioned, LinkedIn is a fantastic resource. Have a look at the desired job title. Maybe look at the career path they've taken and see what kind of moves and skills and education they've had you know what have they done lately to move into that that position and connect and reach out it really really amazes me um how often people are willing to help just you know like you wouldn't expect it you know people are willing to help um and that's great because you've, you've made another connection there and then sort of as you've done this more information gathering maybe you've decided there's one occupation to pursue so set some goals think about you know where do you want to be in one year maybe two years work three four five or start with five and work your way back where do you want to be by the end of year five four three two one and then where, where do you want to be month by month so um it might be if you need to go to a college um, to get an associate's degree or a postgrad, that may take a year. That might be your first year goal, and then you would break that down into months, and then possibly sub goals around your your um, assignments. That's it. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, so, you know, think about that certifications, things like that. Break down the goals five, four, three, two, one. So. You've then got to figure out how to reach them. So again, this is this as I've mentioned, it's about action planning, breaking things down. So it's not one massive lump of like, oh, I've got to do all of this, but you break it down. Um, and also be really honest with yourself. Write down what are some of the obstacles that may get in the way. This is reality check, and it's really, really important because I'm obviously I believe in goals I'm a coach I help people set them I set them for myself I reset them very often um things get in the way of life as long as you're not procrastinating and putting things off too much you have to be really honest with yourself so if you have got um shared care of your children will there be times during the holidays where you are looking after your children in the half term or you know do you look after a relative so or you know after is it something about finance? Is it something about, oh, I want to do this, but we might be moving house? Really be honest with yourself about some of those different things that are going to have an impact and build that into your goal, goal planning, okay? So what transferable skills do you have? You know, that's another piece you can look at in terms of what transferable skills do you have? And this is really 
thinking about, okay, well, you've done your, your skills audit, you've looked at your ideal careers, you've whittled it down, where's the gap, where's the gap? And then really think about that training that you might need to get in place. Now, um, I do this, I work with lots of different people and people uh, break down their career change in many, many different ways. Um, sometimes what I find when I'm speaking to people is that the thing that comes up is I don't know what I want to do um, and I think sometimes um, it's like Buddha says we can't see our own eyebrows actually I can because I'm looking at them in the screen of my phone but I can't see my own eyebrows we can't always see what's in front of us and that includes me so I have help and support and mentors that help me to really go hang on a minute hang on a minute let's dust the shelves let's have a look at things objectively and really focus on on planning those goals so today we've covered career change and again these tips will be uh, useful for job changes whether that's a sideways move but rest assured that um, many people change their careers five to seven times or even up to 11, 12 times in their career. It's perfectly normal because of the way the world is today. Check in with yourself. Is it a career change or is it just you've had a bad day at the office? Are you reacting or is it like a burning desire um, within you that, you know what, I just feel like I might be on the wrong path. And if you have been, don't beat yourself up. As I say, sometimes we can't see the next step till we get to this bit. The bit before, if that makes sense. I did that the wrong way, but anyway. Assess your skills. Reboot, reboot. Uh, no, sorry, that's regroup. So assess your skills. Use DISC. Strengths Finder, I've talked about that tool. Have a look at some of those. Maybe a list of, I don't, it doesn't have to be 10, but it could be 10 occupations that you want to get into. You want to consider and think about, I've got those soft skills, those technical skills. This is what this requires. Where's the gap? Do more research on LinkedIn. Conduct informational interviews with people that are friends, colleagues, mentors, people on LinkedIn that you don't know. Have a look at videos, gather information, get the real reality of what it's like doing this job or this career. Because there's sometimes things that you think, Do you know what, I really don't fancy doing that. And as I said, listen to your gut, in gut instinct, okay? And then setting goals, yeah. So really think about, yeah, what, in about five years time, maybe some people like to work in 10 years time. Decide your time frame and work back from that. And then, you know, get some help. Don't be overwhelmed. You know, I work with people in a number of ways. We do monthly sessions, um, you know, usually every other week, but it can be more. I do career reignition sessions where we do a real reboot and go through some of this stuff together so that you're not alone because I know that it can be can be very confusing when we've got that change and we feel like something's not quite right. But um yeah, so there you go. That's the Facebook Live, albeit delivered a little bit late due to the um, the roadworks where I live. But um, whatever you're doing, have a great evening. Thank you for listening. And yeah, I'll share this on my page. If you do want me to cover any topics, drop me a message on Facebook. Um, I'm going to put this video on YouTube as well. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on Facebook, but I am. And um, yeah, get in touch if you want my weekly e-blast. It's a two minute read, just a little topic that you might find of interest or a blog. Okay then, have a good one. Take care. Bye.